Hi, welcome to Building Bridges Ministry. My name is Joe. <clears throat> well, uh, this week we are going to continue uh, 1 Peter chapter 3. Um, we're going to see how far we can get. Uh, so, <clears throat> let's go to prayer. <clears throat> Our Father, we come to you today. Once again, we ask for wisdom of these words, guidance through it, so that uh, we can learn and put this into application and be the examples you are asking of us. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> All right, so the last video I did, we talked about how the wife is supposed to respect the husband and look, at, look upon him as the leader of the household. And the husband is supposed to look at the wife as a equal partner in this journey to so that they can work together and take on tasks as a team rather than as individuals okay so this chapter kind of continues that that idea um, but once you go from the household it goes out into the public okay so let's dive in uh, to be first Peter chapter 3 we're going to be starting on verse 8. <clears throat> Finally, all of you should be of one mind, sympathize with each other, love each other as brothers and sisters. Be tenderhearted and keep a humble attitude. Don't repay evil for evil. Don't retaliate with insults when people insult you. Instead, pay them back with a blessing. That is what God has called you to do, and he will bless you for it, for it. <clears throat> for the scriptures say, if you want to enjoy life and see many happy days, keep your tongue from speaking evil and your lips from telling lies. Turn away from evil and do good. Search for peace and work, for, work to maintain it. The eyes of the Lord Watch over those who do right, and his ears are open to their prayers. But the Lord turns his face against those who do evil. Okay. Just like in the beginning of this chapter, we're talking about our household. You're starting in a small diameter, let's call it, okay? You, you want to have that. You want to have the respect for each other in a small setting. Because if you're not, if you don't have that respect going on in a small setting, how's it going to look like in a big setting with a lot of other people interacting with you and not everybody being on the same page? So, once we, Peter is, Peter is saying that as Christians, we have to look at ourselves as this huge, big body of family and to all be on the same page you know our, our goal is to walk like christ did to to interact with people like christ did have a situation in life like christ did and come out through the other side like christ did okay and it's very important that we remember that we are all a team member of the christ team let's say all right so, the other thing he's saying in this, this section is, is that you can't, you're not a good representation of Christ when you stab somebody in the back with, with harsh words or snap back at them because they said something to you. <clears throat> um, you know, I, I, I have an example of this that I, I did and, and I... I do regret the way I reacted, but I had a long day, and it's not a good excuse. Anyways, um, we were coming from a, a long day, had a, a team change we did, got it all knocked out. We also had to do an inspection, then we had to do paperwork, and my tablet wasn't working right, and I had my co-worker do the, the paperwork up, and, you know, you're, you're just trying to get home. So, you slip up. Well, my manager guy text us rather than give us a call or something and in the text 
if you look at it, was a snappy kind of text, you know. And of course, you know, the two of us are tired, not where we should be, and we're snipping back, you know. And it, it really wasn't the way I should have reacted to that text. I mean, it's important for our, our paperwork to be correct so that when people look at it, it's in the right, the right way. All we did was we, we just forgot to put the hydro test date on for the cylinders, which we just did. <laughs> so instead of getting snippy, you should have just sent a text back saying, oh, gee, sorry, we, we missed that one. We'll get it all taken care of. Thank you for, for the heads up. That would have been the proper response. And, you know, we all have, have those moments. And as Christians, we need to make sure we are on point with our responses because words are very, very harmful and can really affect life and people. All right. And this blessing that, you know, God had given us or, or has spoke about in scriptures prior to the New Testament. So it's been around for a while. You know, he, he's, he's giving you the idea of how to enjoy life, how to be happy, you know, keep your tongue in check, keep your, your mind in check, all right? So this leads into our next section. We're going to go to chapter, we're going to go to verse 13. And this section is us Christians walking in the world and what we should be doing when people push at us, look at us kind of weird because we care about other people, okay? <clears throat> now, who will want to harm you if you are eager to do good? But even if you suffer for doing good, I'm sorry, doing what is right, God will reward you for it. So don't worry or be afraid of their threats. Instead, you must worship Christ as Lord of your life. And if someone asks about your Christian hope, always be ready to explain it. We're going to stop and pause right there. <clears throat> How important, very important verses going on here. We, we have this, we have Peter saying, you know, there's going to be people who want to hurt, go against us, cause us to fall, call us to, to slip back. And, you know, that can come from anybody, your family. It could be from friends, you know, that knew you from your previous life. And, you know, we have to push through those moments and, and not allow them to let us fall back. And, you know, when we have those moments, we got to reflect on what Christ has done for us in our, in our new life and, and, you know, what he has giving up for us so that we can have this relationship with his father god and uh you know we it's it's an important part here and the other part is that last sentence let me read it one more time for us and if someone asks about your christian hope always always be ready to explain it why do you follow christ be ready to explain that. Give them your testimony. Your testimony, I've said this in many of my videos, your testimony is so important because it gives a, a real-life, to-date testimony of what God does in people's lives. He's done it back when the Bible was written, and he's done, doing it still. It may not be as flashy and being written up in a book anymore, but it's in our heads. It's our, it's our stories that God has done in our lives. And we need to be ready to, to share that hope with whoever asks us, why do we look at this person? Why do we look at this person and help them out when they look like they're not somebody that should be helped out? You know what I mean? So, and, and that's just an instance. I mean, th there's a lot of things that us Christians do that look different than regular people, and it should look different. And it should be that representation of God, of Christ, pulling us, in the direction of him. All right, let's continue on. <clears throat> 16. But do this in a gentle and respectful way. Keep your 
conscience clear. Then if people speak against you, they will be ashamed when they see what a good life you live because you belong to Christ. Remember, it is better to suffer for doing good, if that is what God wants, than to suffer for doing wrong. <clears throat> Once again, you can't, you can't take the Bible and beat somebody in the head with it. That will never, ever, ever work. It's going gonna, it's gonna to actually push people farther, farther away from what you're truly trying to do. You've got to find that opportunity to share how Jesus is. And, if, and when they ask about, about him, give them, a, give them a straight up answer. Don't make it fancier than it needs to be. Just make a straight up story, you know, a straight up answer to them so that it is, you know, easily understandable, a believable story, and not flamboyant. Okay? And, uh, <clears throat> You know, the, the last line there again, you know, remember it is better to suffer for doing good than it is, if that is what God wants, than to suffer for doing wrong. You know, I, I, would, rather, I would rather catch flack for doing something in a positive, encouraging light than, than what I would get for doing something that isn't what Christ would do. All right? Okay. Christ suffered for, for our sins once for all. He never sinned, but he died for sinners to bring you safely home to God. He suffered physical death, but he was raised to life in the spirit. So he went and preached to the spirits in prison. Those who disobeyed God long ago when God waited patiently while Noah was building his boat. Only eight people were saved from drowning in, in that terrible flood. And that water is a picture of baptism, which now saves you, not by removing dirt from your body, but as a response to God from a clean conscience. It is effective because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now Christ has gone to heaven. He is seated in the place of honor next to God. And all the angels and authorities and powers accept his authority. Okay. So Christ went for went to the cross for us to help build that relationship between God and, and us again. And <clears throat> I thought about the sacrifice that Christ did and what it would look like, uh, you know what it should have looked like. And at one point in time, there was a sacrificial, there was sacrificing that we had to do that was being done by the Jews for, you know, sins and stuff. They had to give up this, and, uh, cattle and chickens and all this other stuff for whatever their sins were. <clears throat> so when Christ came and went through his three years of being on the earth here with his ministry and finally came to the cross, that step sacrifice when he went on the Christ on the cross, I'm sorry, should have been should have been looked at as the last sacrifice that anybody would ever have to do. And it, it was that representation of this moment in which, you know, we have this relationship back with God that we can go directly to Him with, with our stuff, and we can talk to Him directly. There was no, 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 th nothing we had to do to get to see God or have that conversation. You just went to Him, and you know that that moment should have should have looked in a, in the eyes of the Jews as a finality of sacrifices. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't go exactly to that to that light. I don't believe, and you know, for us though, the Christ followers that are following Christ, we did get to see that light. We did get to see the sacrifice that Christ did make for us, and see that that would be the last sacrifice that would have to be made. Um, <clears throat> so, 
we need to look at the times when we are doing good and it doesn't, we get attacked however way you want to say that. Um, like people persecuting you, talking behind your back saying, oh, he's just a goody two shoes or whatever, however way they want to try and degrade you. But, you know, anybody else who's looking at you and sees, well, gee, he helped that guy out. Boy, he did this for, for that person. You know, if we show an exam, show our example of being the person Christ would be still, if he was still here on earth, then there's nothing that anybody can talk bad about, about us. You know, we, we're, we should be hardworking people trying to put every effort into everything that we do. So <clears throat> that's what I, I wanted to share. Um, I, I do want to get to, let's go to, let's go to 19. I, I don't want to miss this. Is that, you know, Christ went down, went down and preached to the, the spirits in prison. Those who, who disobeyed God long ago when God waited patiently. God still waits patiently for everybody still here to come to him, to, to take, to follow Christ, to accept Christ as, as the Savior. And, you know, it's very important. Peter, Peter talks about God's patience in another verse as well, um, about how it's, we all want him to quickly come and, and, and rescue the world, but he's giving everybody this opportunity to get their stuff together, to be willing to repent, to willing to see that what God is asking of us isn't that hard. And it's not a, a horrible thing. He just wants everybody to get along with each other and to love each other. So <clears throat> that is our message for today. Please dive into First Peter. Uh, it's a really good book. Uh, Noel and I, I think, are on our last couple of chapters here. But, you know, thankfully I, I got a chance to share it with you guys today. And have a blessed day.